But this week, we're going to look at verse 12. Look back at verse 12. It says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So in your prayer life, when, you're, when you pray, you need to make sure that you deal with sin. You've got to deal with sin. It's a, that's a very important uh, thing for you to do. You've got to deal with it. Not only your sin, but sometimes there's some people that sinned against you. That you, you've got to deal with what they've done to you. Because look what, look what else it says. That, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So we need to be able, to, as much as we want to be forgiven by God, we need to be able to forgive. Look at the verses that, that follow that, verses 14 and 15. It says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, uh, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. You're not ready to be with God if you cannot, if you are harboring grudges against others in this world. Your heart's not right. There's something wrong. Because if you've got the heart of, the, of God, you're willing to forgive no matter what. What did Jesus say on the cross when the world put him there? He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And if you've got the heart of God, you recognize your heart's going to be like that. That whatever it is that people are doing to you, you can forgive them because you recognize something. It's not them personally. They don't understand what they're doing. They don't realize that, that Satan is using them as a tool. And you, but you've got to. As a God believer, as a God fearer, somebody who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you've got to look at that. When people do something to you, you've got to recognize it's not them doing something to me. It's the devil using them to do something to me. And you're willing to forgive that person of the things that Satan has used to come against you. And you were willing to forgive them. But one of the things that you, that you, you know, whenever you're looking at this, forget, whenever you're dealing with sin, if you're going to be able to forgive appropriately, you need to be able to judge it accurately. Does that make sense to you? Look with me in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. It says, Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider, considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of that brother's eye. You see, you've got to be able to see clearly. Well, let me let me just kind of break it down. What 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 is really going on? There are things in this world that God has already judged, and that makes it easy for us. Okay, so whenever you're whenever you see this first verse, it says, "Judge not that you be not judged." That is the go-to phrase in this world. When you start pointing sin out, whether it's in your life or someone else's life, you see, there may be some sins in your life. And, there, and, you, are, and you know, that's what people do a lot of times. They have sin in their own life, and they, they know that there's something wrong. They know they're not right with God, so they start asking people's opinion, right? Um, but what they're looking for is they're look, they already know, but they're looking for somebody Who's going to sympathize with them? It's like, oh, it's okay. You know, everybody does that. You know, it's not. God, there are things that God has judged. So what does that mean? That means if God has already judged it, you don't have to. All you have to do is accept what God has judged. You know, some of the things, I mean, you know, there's a host of, of things that that are are in our civilization that every that the world is accepting right it, it's like good has become evil but evil has become good and that's the way that they want it 
They want it like that because their deeds are evil. They don't want the light to shine into their life because their deeds are evil and wicked. And they don't really want to deal with their sin. Look, Jesus' model prayer is that relationship that God wants you to have with him. And he wants you to deal with some things. And he wants you to judge sin accurately. And here's the easy way to do it. What does he say about sin? You know, there's some. we've talked about some of those sins. When we went through the image of God here a few weeks ago, we talked about the Ten Commandments. It's pretty simple, right? God has judged some things. He's judged murder. He's judged uh, steal. He, he's judged thieves. He's judged adulterers. But we've also looked at some other things too, hadn't we? we we've looked at some of the, the what the Bible calls abominations. Well, God has judged those categories of sins too. Those are different than the Ten Commandments. There's another category that God has illustrated, and they are abominations. And God says, those who commit abominations shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See, God has judged those things. You know what that means? I don't have to. So I need to judge accurately that if in my life I am committing abominations, if I died, I shouldn't expect to go to heaven because the scripture says, thou shalt not inherit the kingdom of God. You're going to hell. That's, it's simple. Y'all agree with that? that? That's what that means? Thou shalt not inherit the kingdom of God means you don't go to heaven. Everybody agree with that? Say amen if you agree with that. Okay, so I just want to make sure we're on the right, on the same page here. There's some other things that Jesus says, all manner of sin shall be forgiven. If, if you recognize those and you judge those things accurately, and you're like, that means that there is a separation between me and God, and I've got to deal with those things. All manner of sin shall be forgiven men, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Well, that means that, that I refuse to agree with God about what I need to do about sin in my life. That's what, it, that's what he's talking about. If you're going to be able to forgive, you've got to judge accurately. And you've got to judge people accurately, too. And you need to accept the message when it is given to you, when it is for you. That's why it's important to read God's Word. You know what, you know what the biggest hurdle to people reading God's Word is? God talking to them, telling them they need to fix some stuff in their life. That's why they don't want to read God's word. That's why they don't want to accept God's word. Because you can ask just about any scholar throughout. They're like, oh man, the Bible talks about some good stuff. Well, why don't people read it? Well, it talks about the stuff that is not so good in their life too. Who wants to read a passage in, in which they are committing abominations in their life and then it says, you're going to hell, buddy? Who wants to read that? I wouldn't have put that in there. I had made it. I had made an easy passage for people to go to heaven, but Jesus says something a little bit different. He says you must believe, and when you kind of think about it, it makes sense, right? Why would you want to go to heaven and be with God if you don't want to have a relationship with Him in this life? You think you're going to enjoy that place? Well, God gives you the choice right now. Are you going to enjoy God now? Well, you can enjoy God later, but if you're going to rebel against Him now. You think he's going to let you rebel against him in heaven? The scripture is clear that you personally are judging yourself according to God's word. If you don't want to be there, God gives you the choice. Judge yourself. You have a choice. Will you believe the words that I'm giving to you? Or are you going to reject them? You be judged. So when we get to this passage where it says, judge not, that you be not judged, Almost every single thing that people are doing in their life, I do not have to judge. The Bible has already judged such things. Everything. And you can read the scriptures. That's what Jesus told them. You realize that? Jesus said, search the scriptures. For they are these the things that speak of me. When you research the scriptures, God's going to talk to you. And he's going to try to draw you closer to himself. But when there's something that prevents that, that relationship, God says, you got you got to get it out. I want to show you one more thing about this subject matter. In verse 6, it says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, 
and turn again and rend you. One of the things that becomes very difficult for us when, it, when we start looking at this forgiveness issue is how do I forgive others that have been so wicked and so evil to me? I just, Brother Mitch, I, you're asking me to do something impossible. You know, I'm not asking you to forgive all the sins that they've ever committed. I'm asking you to see through the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ that says it wasn't really them that was doing it. It was the devil that was using them to do it to you. Can you forgive a person if you knew that somebody forced them and made them do it? Can you forgive them for that? You can. But, uh, but the, nowhere in the scriptures does, he, does God say if you, can get, if you can get that kind of forgiveness in your life that you have to trust those people. Look, if somebody is working for the devil and you know it, you wouldn't trust the devil, would you? So why would you trust his employee? You know what I'm saying? If, the, if they're working for the devil, you can forgive that person because they're working for a bad guy. But that doesn't mean that you have to trust them. It's kind of like an IRS agent, right? Can you be an IRS agent and be a Christian? Oh, nobody wants to say anything. I, I get it. I get it. Because you kind of think that they're working for a bad guy. They probably can be a Christian and work for the IRS. But if they come knocking on my door and they tell me they're an IRS agent, it doesn't matter if they're part of my family. I don't trust that guy. Uh, Y'all with me? Hey, there's people out there like that. You can forgive them, but you don't have to trust them. Does that make sense? And a lot of people, they think, well, if I forgive, then that means I must trust. That is not what forgiveness is all about. Forgiveness is being able to remove the grudge and the burden from you and putting it and saying, God, I am giving this to you. They are your problem. You deal with them. And you know what God says? He's like, I thank you for agreeing with me. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Listen, do not mess with God's people and think you're going to get away with it. God is keeping a tally of those things. In fact, the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 2 that they are heaping to themselves God's wrath. He's just marking it up. Dude, it's getting rough for you. You know, maybe you should get a new job, you know. If you're going to work for the devil, you need to repent of those things and agree with God. I need to quit working for the devil. But that doesn't mean that you have to hold a grudge against those people. God says you can be free of those things. You must be free of those things. You must forgive others of the debts that they do to you. It doesn't matter who they are. And they can be, and it, they can be your family. They can be a brother or sister in Christ. That sometimes God allows... The devil to use people to mess with you for whatever reason. We don't know all the reasons. When we get to heaven, maybe we'll have God will get right to us some extra understanding about why certain people did certain things to us. And we lost a friendship because of that. But you can still forgive those people. You must forgive those people. But you also have to know this. That if you keep going back to them thinking... Well, they, they said they were sorry. They're, they're changed. They may not have. Trust is something that has to be built. You know, you know, parents deal with this sort of thing all the time. You know, as they're raising their kids up, they, uh, you know, they, as, they're, as they enter their teenage years, they grant them trust. And trust is a very, very delicate thing that's easily broken. You break that trust factor, is it really forgotten? It's never really forgotten, is it? But there's some people out there that are even worse than that. It's not like you know that they're evil to the core, and you're going to try to force them into an apology. You know, politicians try this stuff all the time. They get forced into a, an apology, right? You're not going to, you're, if they will not hear Moses and the prophets, they will not hear the commandments and the things that are given from the, from the scriptures. Do you think your logical conclusions of things is going to make any sense to them? It's not. They're working for the devil. 
So why, Jesus says, why would you go, why would you, why would you give that which is holy to the dogs? And why would you cast things valuable like pearls to the swine? They don't care about God's goodness. They don't care about his grace. They don't care about you. So why do you let those things bother you so much? You can forgive them, but then do this. Walk away. Let them go. Do not force them to be your friend when you know they're just going to turn and rend you. That's what Jesus says right here. They will turn and they will rend you. They'll stab you in the back again and again and again. Why would you suffer yourself such pain and agony and continue to go to the same people that continue to do those things all the time? They all have similar characteristics. We find, you know, let me, let, you know, let me preach for a second. We see this, this phenomenon happen in, in relationships with, with people, don't we? A young lady, she starts dating this, this person, and it doesn't work out. So then they go and find another person, right, who treats them, uh, who treats them just like the one before. She didn't like that, but she goes and finds the same one. Somebody, they, they look a little different, but they treat them the same way. It's like they can't put, seem to pull themselves out of this hole. It's some kind of a trap that Satan gets people in, and they go searching for the same thing. You know, when you get in a trap like that, when all your friends seem to do the same thing all the time, and they cause a lot of drama in your life, and, you know, maybe this isn't for some of the, old, the older folks. Maybe this is for the younger folks, because I know you guys love drama in your life, and you have friends that cause problems in your life. If you start, if you flip open to, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and you start putting their name in that bracket that says love is this, love is that, love is that, and then start comparing your friend, if you, want, if you don't want drama in your life, you line your friends up to that category. If they don't line up, get you some new friends. It'd be better for you to have one good friend in this life than a bunch of bad friends. Is that true or not? Some of you are like... You know, they say intelligent people only have a couple of good people in their life. You know why? Because they realize there's only certain people that they can trust. That there's a lot of people out there just trying to get an advantage over them. And they're like, you know what? Yeah, I've got a, a bunch of acquaintances, but I've only got a few good friends. Jesus, the Savior, the, the creator of the universe... When he was dying on the cross, he had spent three years with a, a large group of people. Twelve of them that they traveled together, they ate together, they slept in the same place together. But when he was dying on the cross, how many of them were there? You all remember? There was one disciple and his mom and a couple other ladies. You see, even the one that could heal, who could heal every infirmity and, and feed the thousands from a basket of food, only had a couple good friends in his life. And he looks at you and he says, you can trust me. I'm a friend who sticks even closer than a brother. So when you're trying, when you, when you have these issues going on in your life, Line them up to the Bible, whoever they are, and see how they fit. Especially when you're not good at making friends. Some people just aren't good at making friends. You always pick bad people, right? It's because you're, not, you're, you're looking for friends with your feelings and not according to the scriptures. See, if you're going to line friends up according to the scriptures, that means that you or iron who's looking for some more iron to sharpen you. That's what the scripture wants you to do. He wants you to be iron sharpening iron. He wants you to have friends who help you deal with sins in your life. They're not going to be offended when, when, you're try, when, you, when you show them the moat, when you show them the things that's in their life. They want somebody like that. But if they're going to be offended, they don't want you judging them accurately according to God's word. You've got, you got yourself a problem cooking. And it's going to come back and it's going to haunt you. 
I'm going to quit preaching now and I'm going to get back to the scriptures, all right? Maybe we'll get some more good preaching here in a minute. But you you got to understand forgiveness is a major play in your life. And forgiveness, for forgiveness to work, you've got to deal with sin in your life. And you've got to judge it accurately. And you've got to be able to trust Moses and the commandments and what Jesus said. And if there are those who will not accept Moses and the prophets and Jesus' commandments, let them go out of your life. You've got to do it. You've got to just walk away. Because you will not, you cannot save people. You cannot fix them. Only Jesus Christ can. And if you're there, you may be in the way. Walk away. Walk away if they're going to cause you some problems like Jesus is talking about in here and, and forgive them.